lands. They have both the white. No land! Yep! Ooh. Nice. Okay. Hello. Good game. Welcome back, everybody. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch, help support, and of course, enjoy some Magic the Gathering. Uh, you know, today we hit Mythic. What, what? We slacked on it big time, but we're still going to break it down. You know, we're going to go through the deck. We're going to show you the gameplay footage. We'll talk about the stats along our way there and the meta, you know, the different decks that we encountered uh, and, you know, some of my favorites along that journey, right? So cool video for you guys today. Thanks so much again for watching. Check out the link tree if you're interested in the contest, the giveaways, you know, the Discord, uh, the Patreon, all these different things are available to you easily within the link tree. Description below or just Google it, right? Uh, you, know, you can even buy six swag. You know, provided by Into the AM. There's lots of cool things like that, right? So, uh, thanks again to all of our sponsors. Appreciate you guys and those of you engaging with said sponsors. Um, you know, life wouldn't be the same without you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's break it down, right? Let's get into the deck. What did I use to reach Mythic Rank? Well, I guess it's not much of a mystery if you've seen the thumbnail or the title of the video, right? Come on, HGG, think ahead a little bit, bruh. Rank number 44, we're chilling. Uh, you know, I got in at 49, then we fell to 75 just by not playing for like a few hours, which is pretty aggressive. And, uh, you know, then we went on a little tear and we're back up to 44, which is pretty groovy. So let's break down the deck. I'm using the one and only White Lightning. Now this is an upgraded version from the previous because we had Strixhaven released and we're dialing it in. Uh, you know, most of the inspiration here is from the chemist. Uh, you know, he's been tearing it up with a mono white deck consistently for months. I'm pretty sure that's all this guy plays, uh, but he does it great, you know. So <sighs> this is a uh, land of the three drops. That's what it's become. And, you know, I love it. It works actually pretty good. Some of my favorite cards and some of the most broken cards in this deck, the Elite Spellbinder. We also have Blade Historian, right? Both new additions that took mono white life gain, you know, from like a 10 out of 10, <laughs> just like the greatest deck ever, uh, you know, into the stratosphere. We're talking 13 out of 10 at least, right? So <laughs> without getting you guys hyped up too much, we've got a 2.3 average mana drop with three non-creatures. Those are the malls, of course, and the 35 creatures because we're a hard and aggressive aggro deck. 100% mono white. Of course, you know, you could have the red in there for the Blade Historian, but we're not worried about it. We have 22 land in the deck to reflect the very light average mana curve. All right. So, uh, you know, the deck is a life gain deck. This is fe featured and revolved around Heliod Suncrown, a 5-5 with Indestructible. As long as your devotion to white is less than 5 Heliod is int a creature, which is, you know, leaving him just as an enchantment. And of course, it will always have whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. We can pay two to give another target creature uh, lifelink until the end of turn. And then, of course, you know, when it deals combat damage, it will trigger the first ability there for the plus one, plus one counter. So, you know, we really want to just get this into play as soon as possible and then start to gain life once it's in play. Uh, or, you know, just even have a big creature that we can give lifelink with it. Um, and then we'll increase the strength of our creatures and put up the walls that our opponent can't get through. Um, you know, ideally these plus one plus one counters are going on creatures with lifelink. One of the best examples of that would be the Speaker of the Heavens, a 1-1 one, one with Vigilance and lifelink. We can tap it to create a 4-4 White Angel creature token with flying, activating this ability only if we have seven or more than our starting life total, 27, and only at sorcery speed. So you might want to do this right away before your opponent interacts with it. Um, but it's great, you know, the vigilance here is amazing. You know, if you're against mono red, which is a big majority of the meta, and we'll talk about that when we're done the deck here, uh, you know, it's great. If you get this guy, you know, up to a 6-6, a six, six, something like this, you know, these other aggro decks just fold. There's nothing they can do to beat it, especially mono red as they don't have, you know, exile removal, something like this. Um, so, you know, that's your main strategy here is, you know, to increase the strength and toughness of Speaker of the Heavens or power and toughness, I should say, <clears throat> into the stratosphere, right? Um, you know, getting the Maul of the Skyclaves on it is another great idea because of that vigilance. 
The Maul will give equipped creature plus two, plus two, and flying. And first strike, woof, uh, for three mana, and we can re-equip it if something happens uh, as it is an equipment and will remain in play for four mana. Um, so, you know, that's really the the main directive here is to buff up the speaker. We do have protection for the speaker within Outset of Life's Bounty and the Selfless Savior. The Bounty, I have four copies of this in deck. Uh, you know, it's one mana with lifelink and we can pay one to sacrifice it to give target creature or enchantment you control protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn. Uh, you know, this is great for protecting it. It's also great to deal that bit of lethal damage, right? If your opponent has, you know, a single color uh, in commonality of blockers you can you know pick that color and get through with unblockable which is great you know lethal strike i got you or maybe it just pushes you to 27 and now you're making angels i got you right so uh, the speaker is great uh with this for the protection right you can protect your speaker that's what we really want to do but if it gets to that point where you're like okay i'm gonna go for it then it's great for that as well the selfless savior we can really only use defensively it's a one one we can sacrifice it to give another target we control indestructible until the end of turn and you know it's great and that's why we only run three copies of it uh it's not quite as good but it is very very good moving on we've got four copies of the luminarch aspirant two cmc is a one one at the beginning of combat on your turn put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control uh you know i love to put this on speaker of the heavens two copies sorry three copies wolf of daxos blessed by the sun its toughness is equal to our devotion to white and whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies you gain one life and that's going to trigger the life gain effect on heliod if it's in play uh which is great and you know we can distribute those counters as well uh daxos makes an amazing blocker uh you know this guy gets up to like 11 toughness quite frequently so you know it's just a wall that they're gonna have to really try to get through uh, and it's quite enjoyable to see them try <laughs> the elite spellbinder you know we talked about this being one of the new cards and it does not disappoint <sighs> so this is the problem as we enter the three drops you'll notice that every single one of these three drops that we have included is an absolute banger Mai's in studio here tearing it up uh the elite spellbinder is a 3-1 with flying and when it enters the battlefield look at target opponent's hand you may exile non-land card from it as long as that card remains exiled its owner needs to pay an additional two to cast that um wow uh extinction event i'm exiling you now cost six shadows verdict exiling you you now cost seven what's up how are you gonna take us down now the elite spellbinder has gotten me so many wins on my way to mythic it's unbelievable however you know it also got me a lot of wins Heliod. we talked about this already we talked about the mall of the sky cliffs this has gotten me as many wins right so the elite spellbinder you can take the winota you can take the wipes but it doesn't help really against those aggro decks much Maul of the Skyclaves, beating those aggro decks. Heliod, the whole deck revolves around it. It's an engine, beating those aggro decks. Redain, God of the Worthy. <laughs> you know, the uh, Flying Vigilance 2 3, Snowlands, Enter the Battlefield, Tapped is great. Uh, if anyone is running Snowlands, this is going to slow them down. Snow them down. Non creature spells your opponent casts with mana value 4 or greater will be 2 more to cast. We talked about the event, we talked about the verdict. Uh, this is great. It will also stack if you exile for two and play God of the Worthy. You know, then it's four more to cast that spell. Woohoo! Got him! And then, of course, Valkyria, Protector Shield. I love this. Um, you know, I do like God of the Worthy against the aggro decks, but I just cannot get enough of the shield. If a source and opponent control would deal damage to you or a permanent you control, prevent one of that damage. Uh, there's nothing like watching a Fireblade Charger swing in do nothing <laughs> but die to your blocker that's just a one one with life gain uh, and i'll said right and then try to deal damage to it as well deal nothing <laughs> yeah 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 uh of course whenever you or another permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls counter that spell unless it's control it pays an additional one you know it, it's great but typically they can probably get around this anyways but you know like i said this is gonna make the ultimatums more expensive this is going to make the wipes more expensive um and then of course we're moving on to the skyclave apparition this is a must have four copies of this it's a 2-2 when it enters play xl target non-land non-token permanent that you don't control with converted mana four or less 
When the apparition leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner will create an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the exiled card's uh, mana cost, right? That's great. And then finally, two copies of Linden, the Steadfast Queen. This is a 3-3 with Vigilance, and whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life. Woo! This is a good card against aggro decks as well. 3-3 with Vigilance makes it an amazing target for Maul of the Skyclaves, right? That's groovy. And if you have Heliod in play first, then you drop Linden second. Boom, Devotion's probably filled up. You attack with everybody, you get a bunch of triggers, one trigger for each attacker. All of those gain you life, which trigger Heliod to distribute now, plus one, plus one counters among all of your creatures, which is really, really great. Uh, so I love Linden. It's just so, so good in the deck. Uh, <laughs> talking about so, so good in the deck, Glade Historian. Oh my gosh. This card is sickening. For four mana, a two, three attacking creatures you control have double strike. The Devotion immediately fills Heliod. You can play Heliod turn three. Your opponent has an empty field. You play Blade Historian turn four. Boom, Heliod hits for 10 damage out of nowhere. <laughs> right, it's pretty deadly. Good stuff here. We've got a single castle, Arden Vale, for five mana, making a 1-1. One, one. Uh, I like this as well. It's a good move, and then you can, of course, put that mole on it and hit for three, hopefully. 21 planes, that's the deck, right? Uh, we covered all of the strategies and synergies incorporated within everything during the list breakdown. Uh, you know, to recap, we wanna be getting life gain creatures in play as soon as possible and buffing those life gain creatures up while lacing in forms of protection, uh, whether it be um, reactionary or preventative. I like to use the spell binder as preventative protection. You're right, kind of push those things into the distance uh, Redain, God of the Worthy, pushing them into the distance. Slow down a bit. I just need one more turn, sir. <laughs> or madame, of course. And, um, you know, that's great. So, gain life, smash your opponent, tax them, protect yourself. That's it. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. And if you play this deck just so many times, you'll hit Mythic too. All right, so we're going to dive into today's gameplay footage. And then after that, we're going to break down the deck. You know, how many games did I need to play to reach Mythic? What was my win rate? You know, what did the meta look like? Stuff like that. And of course, my final thoughts with the deck review. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the link tree link to help support the channel. Let's enjoy. Hello again. Welcome. Welcome. Let's get into the gameplay footage now. Break down a few matches for you guys. Maya just cannot stop. She will not stop. This cat is worse than me making content, you guys, with her wheel. Just obsessed. And I think she might need help. We need to get this cat some help. So, everything we do here is super Sag Town. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess if we play Bounty, they crush it, stomp it, whatever. Next turn we can play Speaker Savior in the same shenanigans. Obviously playing the self of savior first, and then if the speaker hits play, it should be safe, I hope, but we're going to have to see. We're going to have to find out, aren't we, Maya? Yeah? Right on. Uh, this looks terrible. We'll just take it. <laughs> what we need is a serious, and I mean serious amount of life gain. And we're going to probably have to take another on the chin here. Uh, you know, maybe we should have went straight with Daxos because we're playing defensively. That's an argument that we could have made. I was focused on this dog. You know what I mean? The dog savior. Or dog speaker. The dog is the savior. It's uh, not the typical time I produce content, so this might be a little bit of a different vibe. LOL. It's in the evening. Probably actually right before you're watching this. It is... 4.45, and you'll be watching this in an hour and 15 minutes. Hopefully, hopefully, I have a uh, hot date tonight with Strider Stone. We're going to help uh, send some traffic to his YouTube channel, hopefully. And this looks terrible. Well, because they'll just do it in response because of the first strike. You know what I mean? 
Let's pass turn. You know, they're going to be tapped. We can attack. Unless they play an Annex, or even our Daxos, but that's... <sighs> Maybe not super relevant for them. The light's a little bright. Maybe I should turn that down. I see it flaring up my shirt a bit. Dun, 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 dun. They do play it. BM, baby! So we could take it, but I. It's cat. Every day. It's to the point where I just made the camp small so I could leave it up top. This will be new with that. Horrific noises in the background always. Right? You know, I still don't want to trade with it, though, is the thing. <laughs> because if we use the dog and trade with it, then it's, you know, right open to removal again. There's a snop, there's a frostbite. And now... My sweet speaker of the heavens has gone, fallen from grace. If we can hold on, though, I don't know how we might go about that as we're going to get cleaved this turn, but if we can, if we can, oh, no. First strike damage has to go through from the champion, so it kind of saves us. We're allowed to go in one step further than we regularly would and kind of see what they're going to do first. All right, the cat has finally called it quits. She'll be back in a few minutes. Don't worry. So they still want to do it in response. So we just let it go through. And they trade with them both and keep the giant in hand. I'm sure they've got it, right? They were uh, stepping through that with us. And now they'll just stomp the other speaker of the Luminarch, right? So it's a really awkward position for us. And I don't know if we're going to get through it. But together, if we try, I believe. If you believe... If you just believe. <laughs> that we can cure cancer with plants. No, I'm not a doctor. I'm the church gardener. <laughs> oh, we fizzle the giant protection from red skis. We still need that life gain, baby. Life gain, baby. Is this even worth it? You know what I mean? I guess. <laughs> Woo! First blood! I'm gonna get you 19 more turns, baby. Better watch out! <laughs> Two cards in hand. Things we don't want to see, and I don't even want to say them out loud. Well, that's one of them, I guess. I was going to say Torbrand Annex Cleave, but I guess Bone Daddy always shows up in multiples. It's like he's ever present. You know what I mean? We've been saving this apparition for something juicy, and the time has come. Let's snag you, Daddy. Get over here! <laughs> but. Now we're in such a sad spot. At least the goblin arsonist is not 
the Fireblade Charger, right? That is a much better card than the Arsonist. So I'm assuming they run both, which means they're definitely running. <laughs> Top Deck City! Welcome aboard! Robbers got reach. We've got Vigilance First Strike Lifelink, baby. Woohoo! Oh. Oh. Poor Mono Red. This is just glorious. Mm, mm, mm. Unless they have a spell that does four damage, I think we'll win. It could be Torbran into Frostbite, something like this. I doubt they play Slaying Fire. Annex is a problem. <laughs> that was one of those no-no cards. Um... Ooh. Oh my. Top deck again. <laughs> All right. I see what you're doing. Blade Historian is such an amazing card. So good. Like what a heater. You know what I mean? And now we're into Angel Town. Oh my gosh. Good game, bro. Love you. Do take care. <sighs> nice. All right, so that's uh, one more, right? We got a couple of wins going on. A little bit of a streak. Starting to accumulate. Uh, broke into 59 this morning. Took a break. Fell to 75. Win one game up to 52. Just so you guys are aware, kind of. I like to share that with everyone. Let's play one more. All right. Our opponent goes first. But, uh, you know, we do have a few of my favorite things. <laughs> I guess we'll keep it. We'll try it. Can we get a two drop? Please, Dad. I'll do my chores. <laughs> That's not a two drop. Okay, we can top deck a two drop. You know what I mean? We've got top deck dot exe running in the background. Maybe I'll have to restart it. What a sad turn. The Spellbinder, I think, is good in this matchup. We can get rid of... There are field wipe, which would be more relevant if we had a full field. Oh, the land. I feel slightly disrespected here. Okay, they're going to take a search to do. So is this 60 card Yorion? What's going on here? What kind of big brain play is this, Fist of Fury? Got me nervous. I went from 30 frames to 60. F oh my gosh, they. <sighs> wow. I don't know. Uh, so we take the wipe. We could have taken, you know, something else. The verdict doesn't hit the blade historian, which is my favorite thing. There's no removal in that hand. So I'm hoping that they search for something. This is sorcery speed. Why would they have not cast that? Like, what is this spell? Why are they holding up mana for it? I'm going wide. They definitely removed the Historian. It was a disruption, you dog! <laughs> oh, 
We got a funny guy on our hands. We we're being kind of greedy a little bit. I didn't want to go single target in case they had the their own single target removal, though. You know what I mean? Like minding, which you know we weren't worried about instant speed. I thought an eliminate or something. I think that's a good card for us. Okay, it's all about this turn. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, hopefully there's no land here. And hopefully that's not an extinction event. Come on. What is that? Oh no, they're going to go single target removal. Shoot. Set. And we... Okay, okay. Okay. So we hit for three, four, five, six. We only have five land. Do you know how cool it would be to have an extra land? So close. Man, I hope they don't get a land. Lands, they have both the wipe. No land! Yahoo! Nice. Okay. And we still remain at rank 52. Two wins in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if that's not incentive to keep playing, I don't know what is. <laughs> All right. Good enough. Let's break down the deck. Woof. All right. So we're tearing it up, getting a little bit of that rank. I do love winning when you're mythic and not gaining any rank at all. That's great. Losing, if you lose probably 100 points, <laughs> 25 at least. So that's the deck, uh, you know, review, I love it. There's so many three drops that are great in mono white. It makes it confusing, but I've been trying to balance it all a little bit. Uh, you know, again, massive shout out to the chemist from South Africa, a uh, pretty wicked competitor within the arena scene and massive inspiration. <laughs> There's so few changes in this deck uh, compared to their version that, uh, you know, may as well call it their deck, right? Uh, so thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Uh, good match. I seen you in the ladder, right? We even played against each other, which was a lot of fun. So this is what you guys want. You want the stats. You want to dig in. Download Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant if you don't already have it. That's what this is. You can find it in the link tree description below or Google it. And uh, yeah, my stats. Let's find our deck. Boom. White Lightning. It looks like we played a hundred matches. 99 matches. Is this what I'm seeing? We played 40 times on the play and 59 on the draw. Whoa, ho, ho, 99 matches. Um, and I did play on my laptop a little bit though. So there's a few games here not recorded. However, there are also a few double negatives because I won games and lost rank with that new bug, which was annoying as well. So, you know, somewhere around 100 matches, which is double what it's taken me in the past. I've done it in as few as 47. Um, so, you know, grinding it out it's not a great win rate uh 75 on the play is pretty groovy 49 on the draw is not the best um and you can see just how diverse the meta is you guys look at all these different decks there are so many different decks right now you know mono white we played it 11 times mono red we played that 10 times playing quite a bit of that new gruel uh, we did go five and one against it though so you know i don't know if it's such a great deck <laughs> um you know the is it deck we're slaying that as well six and one you know lots of that going around the winota decks uh you know are there in fold as well six and three against them uh you know also this is winota as well this other five color deck so it kind of sorts it a little bit differently uh you know this might actually be yorion as well but uh lots of yorion around so we've got Mono Red, Mono White, Rogues, Saltai, Yorion, uh, you know, just doing their thing. They're out and about. Winota is 
in the fold as well. So, you know, that's the five top meta decks as far as I'm concerned, right? Mono White, Mono Red, Salt Iorion, Winota, and that other one I didn't say. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to remember. And then we're seeing little outliers, which I'm very interested in breaking down. Uh, you know, we've got like a Velomachus, a four color Velomachus deck that's milling it, bringing it back, and then, you know, getting Coma back in play as well. And this is a pretty big brain deck that I actually got stomped by. Uh, so I'm looking for the list. I see that I don't have it here. It must have been on my laptop. But this is a deck I'm really interested in investigating more, a Velomachus recursion deck. So you know who you are. Good deck, I loved it. Uh, you know, I'm gonna remake that to the best of my ability. So these are the stats. This is what you wanted to know. Lots of games played, you know. Um, mono Black Auras, oh my gosh, that's a deck I hate. It beat me a few times. It says that we only played it once here, but I'm pretty sure we played them two or three times and Mono Black Auras is so good against this deck. So if you wanna beat the Mono White deck, you're sick of seeing the Mono White deck, Mono Black Auras, is gonna do that for you guys. So again, this is Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant. Download that for free. Support the channel in any other way. Get in on our contests and giveaways. I just gave away a Scalding Tarns and I'm gonna be buying someone's MTG Arena Standard Rare set for the D&D set that's coming out. So that could be you. Subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, and uh, we'll see you around, all right? Enjoy another video on me.